stage, guess what? It's showtime! Shake your rattlers and horns and elkisms and put your hands together for the old hands! It's the old hands! Y'all just getting drunk now, so you can just keep it going for tomorrow. Is, is this like parade day, pre-game? Is that what we're doing? Is this pre-parade drinking time? Oh, parade day! Oh man, Hoboken parade day. If you've never been drunk, tomorrow is the day to watch it from afar and go. Maybe I should join a program. I, uh, I don't want to pee on my neighbor and puke in my shoes. I just. Rather keep it up old school. Um, yeah, I, you know what? Like, I'm a parade rookie. Like, I've been here for a few years, but when I first moved here, I had been to one parade. I, I lived in Chicago, and I went to the Gay Pride Parade in Chicago. Because a girl was like, we should totally go to the Gay Pride Parade. And you know, when girls talk, you're like, you wish yes. <laughs> you don't hear shit. It's like, we should go, so we should go there. <laughs> Wherever you say. <laughs> So I went to the Gay Pride Parade in Chicago, and it's pretty much what you would expect. It was fucking gay. Like, it was... <laughs> but it was, was alright. Everybody was cool, but gay. Cool and gay. And I was really hoping for more gay chicks, but whatever, you know? Dudes in rubber pants, you gotta put up with. Right? You wanna see two girls kiss every once in a while, you gotta put up with rubber pants guys. <laughs> It's an equation. <laughs> so I went to the parade, and then I uh, uh, told a buddy of mine, because it was right when I just moved back to Chicago, I told a buddy of mine, who I hadn't talked to in a few years, I'm like, yeah, I just went to the, uh, I went to the gay pride parade. And he goes, dude, you went to the gay pride parade? You're fucking gay. <laughs> and I go, dude, if you go to any parade, you're fucking gay. <laughs> It's not like there's like a really super straight parade, you know, like it's pretty much show tunes and people dancing. <laughs> That's all I know. The, the porta potties are a little creepy. That's, uh, but the one tomorrow should be fucking madness. Ugh. Drunk Central, which I fit right into. I have. Uh, I love drunks, man. Drunks. Drunks are great philosophers. People don't realize how great. Like drunk people figure shit out. Better than politicians, man. Politicians don't know their fucking heads from their assholes. They're full of shit. Everybody can agree on that, especially if you live in Hoboken. Uh, yeah. I will take a drunk over a politician any fucking day of the week, all right? Drunks know what they're talking about, because they're very simple. Everything is black and white and easy the way it should be, all right? I'm sitting in a bar, I'm having a few beers, I think it must have been about 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, whatever. Um, <laughs> sitting next to a guy who's worked for the railroad for the last 200 years. Right? Like, he took the job from a Chinese guy. Like he's, he's been there a while. And he's, we're watching TV, we're watching ESPN, and they're talking about, uh, about the Yankees and about Mark Teixeira and how much money they give Mark Teixeira, the first baseman for the Yankees. And he just looks up at the TV screen, and they got the picture of the guy, and they got how much money he makes. And he just looks up at it in the middle of the day and goes, You know what, kid? That's why the Arabs hate us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why. years 
we put people in charge over there who rape and torture everybody who's not related to them? Maybe it's because there's like 3% of their population who's making all the fucking money and the rest of them are slaves. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why the Arabs hate us. And then I went, no, it's the first basement from the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> that and you know what the other great part about drunks is? There is nothing PC about drunks. And I love that. Everybody else should be that way. There should be no fear of saying a word. I don't care what the word is. You know what? We're all adults. Say whatever the fuck you want. When you go into a bar and a 97-year-old man calls you faggot, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> I can't believe people in this country still use that language. Shut the fuck up, all right? <laughs> The guy has outlived everybody on his block. If he wants to say faggot, nigger, and cunt, let him go. <laughs> let him fucking go. I don't care. He's not destroying culture, all right? We're too fucking sensitive, man. Let old people do whatever the fuck they want. I get all nervous, man. I get all nervous about words. I get gays are the dead. Like, that's the thing that rallies a lot of people. People don't realize that if, if, they're, if you're not somebody that I'm hanging out with, you're somebody I don't ever have to deal with. And that should be clear in your head. But yet, for some reason, people hear shit and they just get all rallied up. Like, the, the fucking last election, uh, a whole bunch of Republicans down south tried to get some votes by saying, you know what should never happen? Gay people should never be allowed to adopt children. No matter what, they should never be allowed to adopt children. And everybody jumped on board, man. People were like, oh, I don't care what situation they're in, they're better off. I don't care what situation. They should never go to a gay family. And I thought about it for a little while, and I said, that's kind of closed-minded. Except for one state where they actually put it on the ballot. One state, they actually let people vote on it. And that state was Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> in the state of Mississippi, you could vote on that actual, that, that concept of gay people should not be allowed to have children, to adopt children. And you know what? I agreed with the people who were closed-minded. I did. I said gay people should not be allowed to adopt children in Mississippi. Because <laughs> nobody should be adopted in the fucking Mississippi. I've done shows there. And those people are right! I'd rather be starving with AIDS in Haiti than be adopted into Mississippi. Our slapstick is still funny. Intelligent or otherwise, a guy slipping on a banana peel will always be funny. <laughs> Fart jokes are always funny. You know? <laughs> That's just the way it is. No harm, no fault. All right, before I get out of here, I, uh, let me tell you all one more joke. I, I saw I saw a really funny commercial the other day. I, I cracked my ass up. Uh, I saw a Jack Daniels commercial. <laughs> And I love Jack Daniels probably too much. Like, probably a little bit too much. Like, I love bourbon, I like to drink whiskey. And I saw this commercial, and it was for Jack Daniels. And you know what? It worked. It made me want Jack Daniels. It was like all about, hey, Jack Daniels is fucking great, and you should drink Jack Daniels. And I was like, yeah, shit, yeah. I'm on board. Let's drink some Jack Daniels. And then, at the end of the commercial, it goes, Jack Daniels is best enjoyed responsibly. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're lying. People on TV lie to you. Jack Daniels is not enjoyed responsibly. You ever see somebody enjoying Jack Daniels? They're not responsible people. Usually they're arguing outside of a trailer, punching their wife.
the way we do. Guys, thank you so much for supporting.